Hello, hello, and welcome to week 11, Foundations of Tech. We are talking about the environment today. Um, there's a bunch to cover, so we'll get right into it. But uh, importantly, we are discussing environmental impacts of primarily construction, but also otherwise how uh, human activity changes the environment. And there's going to be a group project you'll need to complete, assignment 14. It's already posted on my GPS, so feel free to check that out. Um, so, what are we talking about? We're talking about the production of CO2, but also other wastes, and it seems that the construction industry is one of the largest contributors to these unfortunate outcomes. Today we're going to discuss how and what particular factors affect these environmental impacts. In particular, the housing industry is a huge, huge polluter. About 40% of energy consumption occurs during the construction process um, in the U.S. Uh, material production and construction accounts for about 122 million tons, which is a huge, huge amount, almost unimaginable amount of waste. So we're going to take a look at kind of the three, excuse me, the three uh, parts of producing a material and how those uh, contribute to pollution in different ways. Extraction, processing, and transportation. Transportation is going to be kind of its own category that we'll take a look at more in depth later, but we will mention it. So extraction is, of course, the process of actually getting the raw material. It might be chopping down a tree. It might be uh, mining out some uh, metal. Could be all sorts of things, but uh, importantly, sometimes these activities lead to irreversible changes in the landscape, such as aggregate quarrying or even strip mining. You can see those tiny buildings in the distance, those are two story buildings. So we have to really grapple with are we okay changing this landscape forever in such a way? And sometimes we don't consider these uh, questions in enough depth before making these decisions. So that's irreversible change just to landscape. Now let's talk about processing. Processing does not, of course, alter the landscape, but it does uh, consume a lot of energy, create noise and dust, and creates a lot of waste product. For instance, if we look at something like a blast furnace, uh, it has a lot of similar features to a coal-fired power plant that we looked at earlier in the year, in that it has uh, many byproducts, some of which can be repurposed for other useful materials and some of which can't. Uh, additionally, there's, of course, air pollution. So this is a uh, problematic type of building, but uh, ultimately necessary, and we don't really have uh, good alternatives for how we want to do this. So we have to either come up with those alternatives or do things to offset the climate change that we create by undertaking these activities. So these are definitely uh, concepts we have to think more in depth about going forward as a human race. Last but not least, we have transportation. So obviously once you've produced something, you get it transported to where it'll be consumed. This can be hugely expensive, environmentally speaking, so this is definitely another huge area to consider. And of course, you have uh, car emissions to take into account when you think about the CO2 cost to whatever material you're talking about. So those being, of course, starting with timber. Uh, timber is great because it's so inexpensive. However, environmentally, that's not the case. If you continue to consume wood at the way we've been going, we are not going to be uh, sustainable in our consumption. Uh, we are running out. 25% of the world's tropical forests have been cleared since 1960. There's a huge, huge amount of wood and deforestation. And some of these areas cannot be restored to the way they were before easily. And it's going to be a very, very lengthy process if we wish to undertake it. And in many places, we're not even really trying hard enough. There is, of course, a huge amount of loss of animal and plant species, and we are altering the ecosystem in ways we might not fully understand or fully appreciate. Uh, so timber can be classified as renewable. It has relatively low energy consumption in terms of actually acquiring the raw materials, but transporting it uh, often is very, very expensive environmentally because we tend to 
take the lumber from areas where it's cheap to acquire, such as South America, and then transport it great distances to where it'll actually be used. Metals are, of course, found in the ground. Uh, we're looking mostly at iron and uh, copper when we're talking about construction. Uh, they're non-renewable, of course. Uh, extraction process is very, very costly. It changes the landscape forever, potentially. And uh, we have to keep finding new locations to mine and query these materials. Concrete is a very, very environmentally expensive material. It's non-renewable and it's made from limestone, chalk, clay, aggregate, and gypsum. So materials that you have to query. Uh, the raw materials must be mined and that takes a lot of energy to do as we previously mentioned mining is very expensive and about eight percent of the total uh, co2 generation comes from cement production now why do we never talk about replacing cement with something else we don't really have a better material uh, while environmentally expensive uh, financially this material is very very cheap uh, very easy to use very uh, full of useful properties, uh, right? It's very, very tough once it dries. You can put it into whatever mold you want. Um, it's uh, very versatile, very resistant, easy to replace and repair. So all kinds of useful uh, properties that make it ideal for building, unfortunately, it comes with this environmental price tag. Last but not least, we have to talk about plastics. Plastics are really amazing in terms of how versatile and useful they can be. Unfortunately, they are non-renewable. They create a lot of pollution during the production process. But more importantly, perhaps, is the pollution they create after you throw them away. Uh, a lot of plastics are disposed of, and since they uh, decompose very, very slowly, typically they break down into smaller and smaller pieces, and those microplastic pieces, as we call them, are washed up into the water stream, picked up by the air, and then rained down all over the world. Uh, microplastics have been found on Mount Everest and in the most remote reaches of Siberia. They are everywhere, they're inescapable, and uh, it's unclear what kind of effect they might be having on the ecosystem and our bodies. So looking at embodied energy, so this is a kind of a comparison to how much energy is consumed by certain material production. So timber, relatively little energy. As we go up, we see a humongous increase when we get to, let's say, glass or steel. And then aluminum is very, very expensive to produce. So that is why uh, timber tends to be the primary choice for buildings, which makes sense. And aluminum would try to reserve for things like airplanes. Um, all right, so we're going to take a look at all of these other questions on a future class. Uh, but please don't forget, there is a group project. The details for it are posted right here under assignment 14. If you have any questions or not sure who your group mates are, please make sure you email me as that information should have been already distributed to you. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next class.